This is part three of three on chapter one, the main themes in microbiology. In this part of the chapter, we're going to look at taxonomy, which is part of biology where we organize, classify, and name microorganisms. And then we're also going to look at the evolutionary relationships between these microorganisms. So taxonomy is looking at organizing, classifying, and naming living things. And the formal system originated by a guy, Carl von Linne, or Linnaeus, Carl Linnaeus. He was a Swedish botanist, and he traveled around. Um, he focused mostly on plants and animals, but he came up with this organization system that we still use today. So we're going to be concerned with classifying things, so how we're going to arrange organisms into different groups based on how they're related to each other. The nomenclature part, this is where we're going to assign scientific names or binomial names to different species. And then the third part is identification. So we have to write down, we have to determine and record traits of that organism so that we can identify it later on and place it into these different taxonomic groups into this classification that we're going to be using. This is showing our different levels of classification. So over the top we have a domain. A domain is the largest level. So we have three domains. There's the archaea domain, bacteria domain, and eukarya domain. And we're going to be looking at each of those three domains. Within these domains we have kingdoms. And then in those kingdoms, we get phylums or divisions. Those phylums are divided into classes, classes divided into orders, orders into family, family into genus, and genus into species. So eventually we start with this really big category called a domain, and then you get down to one individual species at the very end, or at the smallest level. And here is sample taxonomy groups. Um, let's see, so both of these examples start out in the domain eukarya, and then if you look on the left hand side we're going to be looking at humans and what categories they fit into. So we're in the domain eukarya, and then we're in the animal kingdom. And the animal kingdom includes sea squirts, it includes the humans, lemurs, sea stars, dogs, gorillas. So all the different animals. That kingdom, they're divided into different phylums. So one phylum is the chordata. That phylum is divided into classes. So we have the mammal class. That's divided into orders. We have primates. Divide into families, and then we get to the genus and specific species. So you get down to one species at the very end. This um, sample fits in with all other organisms. So on the right hand side, we again have the domain eukarya, but this time we're looking in a different kingdom. So we're looking in the protist kingdom. So these organisms. They include protozoans, algae, and slime molds. The protist kingdoms divide into different phyla, divide into classes, divide into orders, families, genus, species. So you start off with this big group of organisms, and you get into smaller and smaller groups until you get to that one single species at the very end. So we have these different levels of classification. The two smallest levels, the genus and species, we use those levels to come up with the specific name or the binomial or scientific name for that one species of organism. So just as an example, there's a bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus and it's shown in the pictures down here. The Staphylococcus, the first word, that's what genus the species belongs to. And then the aureus, the second word, that's the specific species. So you take the genus and species, the Staphylococcus aureus. The genus is going to be capitalized. 
the species is not capitalized, and that's all in italics. So in English and a lot of other languages, we don't use italics a lot, um, except we do use it for these scientific names, so they're usually very, very easy to pick out. Um, another example is humans, we're homo sapiens, so our genus is homo, the species is sapiens. And then when they write that out, the homo part is capitalized, and then homo sapiens all in italics. And that's the binomial or scientific name. Besides the taxonomy part where we organize, classify, and name microorganisms, we also want to make sure that species that are in a group are evolutionarily related to each other. So this goes along with what we call phylogeny. Phylogeny is just the natural relatedness between these groups of organisms. And this is based on evolution, and this is the theory of evolution, so this is another theory that has lots of evidence to support it. Um, lots of experiments done by lots of different scientists. So the theory of evolution just states that all new species originate from pre-existing species. So organisms, they change over time, they adapt to their environment. And closely related organisms are going to be more similar to each other. They're going to have similar features because they evolve from a common ancestral form. So we just have this theory of evolution and we try to include it into this um, organization, these different levels of classification. So here we're going to go to the three domains. Remember the domains are that largest group in our levels of classification. So we have the domain bacteria. These are the true bacteria. Our second domain are the archaea. These are odd bacteria that live in really extreme environments. So they live in environments with high salt concentration, high heat. Um, they live in environments where there's no oxygen available, so like in methane swamps. So we'll look at some examples of archaea. And bacteria and archaea, both of these domains, they have prokaryotic cells. So they have really simple cells that lack a nucleus. The third domain, the eukarya domain, these are organisms that have eukaryotic cells. So cells that have a nucleus and they have all the different organelles we're going to be looking at in the next unit. Under the eukarya domain, there's four kingdoms. There's the plant kingdom, the fungi kingdom, the animal kingdom, and the protist kingdom. So keep that in mind and we're when we get to our different diversity in microbiology, you're going to have to know the three domains and a few kingdoms under those domains. And this is showing again how these three different domains are related to each other. So at the very bottom of this diagram, we have an ancestral, the first living cells. From those first living cells, we have evolved the domain bacteria. We also have gotten the domain archaea and the domain eukarya. So those are our three domains. And then our domain eukarya is split up into the four kingdoms. So again, we have the plant, animal, fungi, and protist kingdom. And like I just mentioned, we're going to be looking at organisms from all three domains. So microorganisms come in all three domains that we have up here.